Okay, here's another problem. The amount of pus that the doctor has to drain from Gabe's big head on the first day of treatment is one liter. After treatment, pus starts to fill Gabe's head again, so he must go back the next day where the doctor drains 0.6 liters. The same thing happens the next day when the doctor drains 0.36 liters. How much pus is drained from Gabe's head over the course of 20 days after the doctor drains his head on the 20th day? For this problem, we can write out the first few terms of this sequence. So uh, a sub 1 is 1. Okay, a sub 2 is 0.6. a sub 3 is 0.36. And so if we go 1, 0 0.6, 0 0.36, the difference between these is uh, we're multiplying by 0 0.6 every time. Okay. Uh, the next term, if we follow that pattern, would be 0.216, which is what 0.36 times 0.6 is. Uh, so times 0.6 times 0.6. Okay, um, and then like dot, dot, dot. Now we're looking for the sum of this, what we, we turn into a series, and it's going to be a geometric series because if we're multiplying by 0.6 every time, that corresponds to what's known as a common ratio R. Um, and we are curious, we are interested in knowing the first 20, the sum of the first 20 terms of what will be a sequence here. So if we write this as a sequence, it's 1 plus 0.6 plus 0.36 plus 0.216 plus dot, dot, dot. We want to know the sum of the first 20 terms. So uh, there's fairly straightforward. There's a formula for that, which we've shown, uh, we've kind of derived that in class. It's that S sub N is equal to A sub 1 times R, I don't know why I put that in parentheses, I just felt like it, I guess, to the nth power minus A sub 1 divided by R minus 1. So for this problem, I just want to know the first 20. So I go sum of the first 20 terms, N is 20. First term is 1 times 0 0.6 to the 20th power minus 1. I don't know what's up with these little squiggly lines. I'm very sorry about that divided by 0 0.6 minus 1. Uh, and when we do this math, uh, I'm not sure what the answer is. I mean, actually, it's going to be it's going to be 2.499 dot dot dot. Like it's approximately 2.49. So we can just say uh, it's 2.5 liters. Now, that's after 20 days. If we were curious, if like this was just a chronic issue and Gabe needed to go back to the doctor every single day, get every single day in perpetuity to get his head drained, how much like ultimately how much would get drained uh, like and after an infinite number of days and uh, we can see since these numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as they go you know as we progress in this series we are going to be adding progressively tinier and tinier numbers to our sum every time like the sequence of partial sums would converge upon some number well, what number is that we can we can determine what number that is because it's a geometric series and it's a converging geometric series. There's a formula that is S sub infinity, so the sum of an infinite series, and this is only for geometric series, is equal to A sub 1 divided by 1 minus R, and this is only true when R is less than, and the absolute value of R is less than 1. That means that the number we're multiplying a previous number by to get the next number in a series is is a value, an absolute value of less than one. Uh, what that will do is eventually, after you know so many terms, will we'll converge upon a sum. Any other possible scenario where we have a, a neither an arithmetic series or a geometric series or a neither kind of series, like a composite kind of series, uh, that has that that doesn't meet this criteria. It has no sum. Effectively, the the sum would be either, either indeterminate. We we don't know. It could be like a really big positive number, really big negative number, depending on what term we're on, or it could just be effectively the sum would be infinity, which we call that no sum. So the only kinds of series that have a sum, or the only kind of infinite series that could possibly have a sum, is a a, a, a converging series. Um, and so arithmetic series period do not have sum. So anyway, it's a little confusing, but so a sub 1 for this one is 1, and we divide that by 1 minus this is 0.6, which we don't even need a calculator for this, 1 divided by 1, 0.6 is 3 fifths, so that's 1 divided by 2 fifths, which is just 5 halves, which, hey, it's 2.5. So 
we said our answer was 2.5 because we rounded it from 2.499, which it just goes to show that on the 21st day, if Gabe went back to the doctor, there'd be basically no pus left in his head. Like the doctor would not need to it, – it's at the point where it would be dumb to go back to the doctor because he's draining so little pus every time. If he, if he just sat there and let that pus accumulate for the rest of his like life, uh, it, it wouldn't be an issue because so little is being generated. That's kind of interesting. Uh, oops. Uh, but the previous slide it passed it for some reason, but the, the question was a ball is dropped from a height of 16 feet and rebounds to 80% of its previous height each bounce. What is the total distance the ball will have traveled up and down after 15 bounces when it bounces for the 15th time? So we could draw a picture here to kind of explain what's happening. Basically, the ball started up at the top of somewhere and it drops it drops 16 feet. Okay, There's, this this will be the ground. We'll do a line for the ground. Okay, then it bounced 80% of that height on the next bounce, so like to there, and then again, okay, and then again, then again, and on and on and on. Um, and we're, we're being asked for uh, the amount of total distance that the ball travels up and down. So that is not displacement. Like if we wanted to know displacement from when we dropped the ball originally to when it hit the ground, the displacement would just be the, the height from which it was dropped. It would be 16 feet. That's a different val that's a different kind of thing than distance. Distance is the total amount of like distance that the ball ball traveled. So when uh, it went down first and went up, then it went down, then it went up, then down, and we're gonna add up all those distances. Okay, so there's this kind of a tricky problem here because what we're looking at are the sums of, of these things. Like that's an up and down, that's one, that's an up and down, that's one, that's an up and down, that's one. We started with half of a thing. And so we can't say that our first term is 16 because that's not that's not the pattern here that's being replicated. That's not the, the that is if we multiply that by 16 by 0.8, which is the common ratio here. This is a geometric series. Uh, that would only give us to like right here. We'd have to multiply that by two to find the entire like distance it travels between you know one bounce to the next. So there's two different ways to think of this problem. We can pretend that we actually started like it was thrown up. So our first our first distance would be 32, which is 16 times 2. So if we pretend, if we were to pretend that a sub 1 was actually 32 because it's 2 times 16, then we can proceed like normal for this problem. We just have to know that we're going to have to subtract 16 at the end of this because if we if we say this is 32, we're adding in this amount of distance when we shouldn't be. Uh, so we'll have to go back and like provide for that. So so that's that's really it. Like if if I can know that, then I just say okay, this is bounce one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 15. So I would just say S of 15 is a geometric series. So we do the geometric uh, sum of the geometric series of finite geometric series. Uh, the first term is 32, and we multiply that by the common ratio, which is 0.8. And that's being raised to the 15th power, minus 32, divided by uh, r minus 1, so divided by 0 0.8 minus 1, or negative 0 0.2. Um, and that is going to, now this isn't the answer, right, because I still have, I'm going to have to subtract um, 16 from this. But let's see what that is. 32 times 0 0.8 to the 15th power, minus 32 divided by negative 0.2, that is 154.37 feet. Okay, minus 16. So the, the answer, answer is going to be 154.37 minus 16. So subtract 16 from that. We get, it's, it's 138.37 feet. That's the answer, okay? Now that's that's if we pretended that this was our first that this right here was our first term. Um, we can do this another way by saying let's not say that. Let's say our first term is this one. Let's say this is our first term, and then whenever whatever if we use that as our first term, we just have to add in that first drop of 16. 
the only difference here is that now this isn't one, this isn't the second bounce, it's the first bounce. This isn't the third bounce, it's the second bounce, not the fourth, but the third. And so the total number of bounces you would have in this second scenario would be 14 instead of 15. So if we just show that that would work too, um, then we could we would say, so that was like uh, one, option one. Okay, or we could do option two here. So uh, this would be where a sub one w would actually be because we have to we would take the third we would basically it's like this right if we wanted to know what this new a sub one is we'd have to take our original height of sixteen uh, times two but then which is the the both the down and the up of this first one and multiply that by 0 0.8 so sixteen times one point six would be I don't know what this is. Uh, 25.6. So 25.6 now would be my first term. So this would be 25.6. Uh, and then to do this math, now it's S of 14, right? It's 14 bounces. And then again, from this, we're going to have to add in our 16 at the end. So it would be 25.6 times 0.8 to the now 14th power minus 25.6 divided by uh, the, the 0.8 minus 1. That is equal to something. 25.6 times 0.8 to the 14th power minus 25.6. Oh, I forgot to divide by negative 0.2. Uh, that is equal to 122.37 feet. So remember, we have to add 16 to this. Uh, so answer for this one, same thing. It's going to be 122.37 feet plus the 16. Uh, and that gives us again our 138.37 feet. So that's the answer to this one. Uh, the the thing is is oh so that that's it. Now but you get this bonus question here. If this was like a perfect scenario, if there was no friction, if there was no kinetic energy loss to heat, uh, effectively this ball would bounce forever. What what distance would the ball eventually or not eventually travel? Which is kind of a weird question to ask. But what I'm asking for there is s sub infinity. So S sub infinity, and again, we kind of have two ways to approach this. We could say the first term was 32, which it's we know it's not, right? It's it's like we're kind of pretending it is. And then uh, we, we don't do R minus 1, we do 1 minus R, so it would be 1 minus 0.8. So if we took 32, and ew, why did I write 32 like that? What am I? 32 uh, and divided by 0.2, 32 divided by 0.2, is 160 okay but then uh, we already put too much in there because it's not an extra 16 so we have to take the 160 minus the 16 that would give us 144 if we did it the other way where we wanted s sub infinity is equal to the, that 25.6 divided by the 0.2 uh then we would just have to add 16 and we'd get our 144 that way too uh just to show make sure i'm right about that 25.6 divided by 0.2 and then add 16, yeah, so that's 128, uh, and then we have to add the 16, which gives us 144. So 144 feet would be our total. Uh, if it never stopped bouncing, it would have, it would like converge upon 144 feet total distance traveled. Next problem here is pretty similar, uh, but there's a couple of little different things to consider here. Uh, and T gravity has developed wacko putty, which, if dropped, rebounds to 108% of its previous height. A ball of wacko putty is dropped from a height of 6 feet. How high does it bounce on the 10th bounce? How far has it traveled up and down from when it was dropped to the top of the 10th bounce? Okay. Um, so, we could draw a picture here to represent this also. So here's the ground, and here's where the wacko putty starts. Or actually, let me move that down a little bit because it's going to get bigger. So there's where it starts bouncing, or we drop it from there, right? It drops from there, bounces, and it's going to bounce higher. And it's going to bounce a little higher than that, a little higher than that, a little higher than that, a little higher than that. And then it's going to bounce eventually. We want to know after 10 bounces, well, what's the height of that 10th bounce? So this is a little bit tricky because of how many bounces, like what's our end for this? Is it just 10? Like what are we, what are we using for our first term? So... 
it starts at six, right? But after the first bounce, right, what we're asking for, this is effectively a sub one. This is the height after the first bounce. Let me use a different color for that. This is the height after the first bounce. This would be the height after the second bounce. This would be the height after the third bounce. So we have an option here. We can either use this height and say that n would be 11 because that would be effectively the height after the zero width bounce, if that makes sense, that height right there. Um, so we would have, say then we'd have a total of 11 bounces if we're starting with like zero as our first bounce. Or we could use this height and say that there were 10 bounces because that's the height after the first bounce, then 10 bounces later, what's that height? Uh, and we're going to need, we're go we are going to need to find, you know, that height because that's one of the questions being asked here. And so this is just a matter of how you want to set this up. So effectively, what I'm saying is that either of these two statements will be, be correct. We could say a sub 11 is equal to 6 times the con So here's the formula, right? a sub uh, sorry, a sub n is equal to r, uh, a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. Uh, that's the formula we're using here. So in this case, a sub 11, where, our, where, a, where 6 would be our first height, is equal to the common ratio, which would be 1.08, because 108% 108 is 1.08, uh, to the power of 11 minus 1. So that's going to be something. And what I'm saying is that will be the same thing as this. If we wanted a sub 10, we'd have to use our first term, which is going to be whatever 6 times 1.8 is. 6 times 1.08, which is uh, 6.48. So 6.48 times 1.08 to the 10 minus 1. So times 10 to the 9th. Uh, or to the ninth power. So e, both of these are the same thing. Hopefully you can kind of see why they're the same thing. Basically, I've multiplied 1.08 an extra time in the, to get the first term of the second thing. So they're the exact same number. And that number that they turn out to be is, I don't know, hold on, 1.08 to the, let's just do the bottom one, times that, times 6.48 is, that's 12.95. Okay, 12.95 is the same for both of these things. So that's the answer to the first part of this question, which uh, we do need in order to figure out this next part, which is actually also the same kind of trickiness as the previous problem. Okay, if we want to know the total height that this thing traveled up and down uh, from when it was dropped to the top of the 10th bounce, well, we have this extra little piece that's like an oddball to consider. And then after eventually we'd have this last height this up part of the 10th bounce because that's where we're stopping our our calculations and that's where we're starting it so the thing that's repeating is not that little part it's these in between parts okay so we could we could say just like in the previous problem we could say that's our first like distance or we could say oh let's pretend that it did this also and we say that's our first distance so no matter what we have to we have to do this our number of terms then would be different so the two equations that you would set up, and this is a formula you're using, s sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus a sub 1 divided by r minus 1. We could have two different things. We could say either s sub, uh, s sub, what is it, it would be s sub 10, I believe. Yeah, s sub 10 would equal 6 times uh, 1.08 to the 10th power, not six, sorry, it'd be 12, right? Because this, the purple link is 12. Let me erase this, ink, 12. Okay, minus 12 divided by uh, r minus one. Uh, am I doing this right? I think so. I think I'd be right, because this would be one bounce. That's not even, that's our first bounce. So it actually, this would be 11, I think. This has to be 11. Uh, and then uh, 1.08 minus 1. So, and then from this, we would have to subtract that first extra height, which was 6, and the rest of the way down here, because we just said that there's another way down. So we want to, we'd have to subtract 12.95, I believe. Okay, so that's uh, that's one way. Uh, we'll check this later. I could be totally wrong. S, then we could say, okay, now S sub 10, we would say it's that first distance. So 6.48 was this height right here. So 6.48 times 2 would be the, the height of this, the whole total distance travel in that second bounce, which was 12.96. 
So there we have 12.96. Now that's times 1.08 times 10 to the uh, well, not times 10, times to the 10th power minus 12.96 divided by uh, 1.08 minus 1.08 minus 1. Uh, but now we'd have to add the 6 and add the 12.95, I believe. Let's see. I, this could be wrong. I, I might have done this wrong, but let's just check. So 12.96 times 1.08 to the 10th power minus 12.96 divided by 0 0.08. Yeah, that gives us... Um, actually, yeah, I think we, need, we did this wrong. This should be... This, this is backwards. This should be 10, and this should be 9, okay? Because there's that many bounces. Yeah, because we're talking the top bounce. Now we're actually looking at bounces and not heights. So this would then be 9, and this would be 10. Um, and that, that, that will give us the answer. So uh, when, let me go back and, and undo that problem. Um, if I raise it to the ninth power instead. Uh, what we get is 161, so this would be 161.84 plus 6 plus 12.95 uh, plus 6 plus 12.95. That gives us 180.78 feet, and that should be the same thing we get for this one too. Uh, I, I believe it is. You can plug that in and check, but this is the correct answer. So it would be 180.78 feet. Okay, I want to stop the video there and we'll do one more video to complete this applications.